Hello and welcome to another Three Things in Podcasting. This one is going to be a little different. I am recording this before I go on vacation and you are hearing this while I am on vacation. And so I have missed a whole week of news. So if something crazy happened on Wednesday and you're like, how come you're not talking about it? Well, it's because I'm on vacation and I probably didn't hear about it because I didn't bring my laptop. Um, So instead today, I want to give you three tips to look for uh, or for you to do three things for you to do at Podcast Movement. Podcast Movement is going to be in Washington, D.C., really National Harbor, Maryland, in a couple of weeks as this episode comes out. I'll be there, so if you're going to be there, let me know. I'd love to meet up. Uh, But it is a big conference. There are lots of talks and tracks and expo floor and people, and I've done it a few times. I think I did one year really the right way and one year really the wrong way. Uh, And part of that, the, the year I did it the wrong way, is mostly because uh, it was in Orlando, Florida. I'm a huge Disney fan, if you can't tell from my background. Um, And my brother works at Disney World, but also that was right before Star Wars Galaxy's Edge opened up, and I was able to preview Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. And so I kind of skipped out on the conference a bit. Now... To be fair, that year was very similar to the year before. I don't I don't feel the talks were particularly good. Um, there was a lot of repeat stuff from the 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 year before. And this was like 18 and 19. Um, and so, you know, probably a lot has changed since then, but I haven't been back since. Now that I'm more deeply embedded in the podcast community, though, um, I am really excited for a lot of things, to see a, a lot of people I know, to meet new people. I'm way more focused on helping podcasters now. And so this is really where I I feel I need to be. Uh, that said, I don't think I'm going to go to a lot of talks. There are a lot of talks, uh, so many um, that it's, it's really hard Like I used to look through the schedule and plan my whole day out. And now I just kind of play it a little bit more by ear. I'm way more interested in forming the relationships. Not to say that all of the talks are bad. There's just a lot of talks. And so like uh, Tom Webster is, I think, speaking. He's always a staple. I'll definitely go to that. Uh, I think Ira Glass is speaking this year. And just like from a storytelling aspect, it'll probably be really cool. Uh, I learned a lot from... Uh, Terry Gross of Fresh Air the first year I went. And so there are going to be a lot of great talks from a lot of great people. Um, But aside from the talks, I think that there are uh, three things or three ways that you can really uh, get the most out of podcast movement. So let's look at those three things. The first one is collaborations. This is the biggest podcast conference, at least in the United States, right? Uh, It's like the premier industry podcasting event. That means lots of podcasters of all sizes are going to be there. And I think one of the best ways for you to grow your podcast is by doing podcast swaps, trailer swaps, feed drops other words that might rhyme with swap and drop and being in the room with people and really getting to know those other podcasters of similar or around similar sizes uh, is going to be really beneficial. You'll get to meet other people in your niche, outside your niche, and it's really a good opportunity for you to set up uh, potential recordings or collaborations Uh, for your show. Now, they are also going to have booths there and like uh, like recording booths. And so you can meet people there and record a live show with them. Right. I think a lot of my friends, I sadly missed craft and commerce this year, which is convert kits. 
uh, event and they have like a new creator studio with a great podcasting booth. And a lot of my friends recorded episodes from those booths. Uh, and I really felt FOMO about that. But if you know people are going or you have a co-host who you normally record with remotely or you meet people at the conference, this is a great opportunity for you to uh, record a really great show, live show with somebody to release on your feed later. Uh, or it's just a really great place to meet new podcasters and set up a bunch of podcast swaps. You're in the same room. You can get scheduled there or you can go to the booth and record something. Uh, or you could just say like, hey, I think this would be a really good opportunity for us to do like a trailer swap, right? Um, either way, this is lots of podcasters are going to be there. And this is your opportunity to collaborate with those podcasters, whether it's just doing a feed drop or a, a podcast swap of some sort or doing a joint interview or video or something like that, right? Record from the expo floor and share that video to your social media. Great place for you to meet and work with other podcasters. So that's the first one. Uh, similarly, uh, the second thing, the second tip, I think for you as you move into or if you decide to go to podcast movement is partnerships. They have a massive exhibition hall. Everybody, almost everybody like involved or remotely involved in podcasting is going to have a booth on this floor. Uh, I actually, I don't have the website up. Usually they have uh, like a bunch of logos and, and um, stuff like that so that you know who's going to be on the expo floor. But the expo floor, open all day. And so if you decide that you're not going to um, do the talks, then you can hang out on the expo floor, maybe schedule some time with uh, some potential uh, sponsors or partners and things like that. Let's take a look. I have it up here now. So um, sponsors and exhibitors. So uh, most of the time, the sponsors are going to also have a booth. So iHeart, Libsyn, uh, Airwave, CNN, Descript, uh, a bunch of other places, event event sponsors. So like Acast, Audio Boom, Asha, Black Magic Design, Amazon Music, Audacity Podcasts, so like big podcast networks. Kajabi is going to be there. Uh, and then if we look at the actual exhibitors, like these are people who are definitely going to have, and so it looks like the sponsors um, are are mentioned here as well. So uh, highlight a few. Airwave, uh, B&H, right? They are a gear uh, outlet, right? Um, uh, Blueberry, Buzzsprout, Captivate, Descript, um, Forecast, Headliner. Uh, Headliner is a previous sponsor of mine. NASA is going to be there, which is pretty wild. Uh, Riverside, of course. Uh, Seeker, Simplified, um, and a few other places. The Legalpreneur. Um, and so this is your opportunity to meet with a lot of great people in and around the podcasting space. Uh, and this is, I mean, yeah, so these are the exhibitors and the sponsors. And so you'll probably be able to get FaceTime with them. But there's also, uh, you know, a great agenda of, of schedules of, of speakers on the schedule, uh, panels and something called brain dates and lots of other networking opportunities. And so going into this, you should think about what potential partnerships inside the podcasting space could look like. I'm uniquely positioned because I cater to podcasters. And so I have a lot of overlapping audience. But if you serve a niche that some of these podcast companies are going after, like coaches, maybe, um, or, you know, uh, fitness influencers, right? Like maybe uh, B&H is trying to sell um, a microphone that you can work out with or something like that, right? Um, this is your opportunity to say, hey, I have an audience in this niche. I'm an experienced podcaster. I can speak 
um, uh, I can speak well, I could speak uh, intelligently, there it is, about your product to my audience, right? And so I would say don't go like whole hog and be like sponsor my podcast, but ask them, uh, you know, what are their goals for the rest of the year? What are they trying to achieve? Who are they trying to reach? Why are they at this conference? And then take that, think about it, and uh, tell, like, show them how you can help them solve their problem, exchange contact information, and continue the conversation when everybody's home, right? So I think that is a really good opportunity. That has worked super well for me, especially in the WordPress space. I would go to word camps where I knew people were paying five figures to have a booth uh, as a sponsor. And if I could position my offering as, hey, you're paying $20,000 for a two-day event. What if you paid me $10,000 for six months of me talking about you on my podcast? That's pretty good positioning if you're reaching the right audience and you're helping them solve their problems. So I think there are a lot of partnership opportunities there as well. And then finally, there is a ton of content at Podcast Movement. I haven't even looked at the schedule yet, but I know that they have multiple tracks throughout the day. Just like looking at the first uh, time slot, it looks like we have keynotes, and then the first um, non-keynote time slot is 10.15. We've got one, two talks. Uh, and then at 11, we have one, two, three, four, five talks. Um, so, you know, we're probably looking at three to five tracks per time slot. That's a lot, right? This is why they sell the virtual pass, right? Where you get all the recordings. Um, but that's a lot. That's information overload. So what I'm going to advise you do is between now and the conference, think about where you need the most improvement. Maybe that's growth. Maybe that's content. Maybe that's getting feedback or sponsors or improving your membership, improving your podcast processes. And look for one piece of advice from the conference that you could take home and implement when you get back. Because here's what usually happens. You go to a million talks, you take a million notes, and then nothing. There's too much to act on, right? And you've missed a few days of work anyway. So now you need to find time to organize and prioritize. Forget that. Write down one thing, right? Maybe you can write down one thing each day or two things each day. But at the end of the conference, on the flight home or the drive home, think about the one thing you're going to implement. Because some action based on a limited list is better than no action because the list is too long. So that's what I recommend. Look at collaborations, look at partnerships, and find one way to improve your podcast as soon as you get back from podcast movement. If you do that, I think you will have a very successful conference. And of course, I will be there. So if you are enjoying this and you want to meet up and chat, let me know. The best way to uh, get in touch with me and find out kind of my plans for podcast movement is to join my mailing list over at podcastworkflows.com slash join. Thanks so much for watching this. I hope that your summer is going well. And if you are going to be at podcast movement, I hope to see you there. Until next time, I'll see you out there.